I know I'm 24K. If I go ahead and slap 20% of my pin weight on there, I just, how, how many customers did I pretty much just lose? Exactly. And a I'm, bunch. Yeah. A bunch. So we're pulling out to San Antonio to go to the RV show. Right, Coco? So we're headed from Corpus Christi to San Antonio for the RV show. I'm, I'm not sure how big it is. There's, a, there's one in February. It's in Houston. I'm sure it's bigger. But we're kind of going there anyway. And then we're going to head to College Station to check out Texas A&M for our daughter, Grace. What do you think about it, Coco? You like Texas A&M, right? So, so this is a rental. One good thing is Bethany gets a rental everywhere we go. So each time we end up in town, she'll get a rental. We'll have the F-450 and the rental car. So we're already traveling with without the RV, but anyway, hence the rental. And we change out the rental. They make you turn it back in to do maintenance on it. About what, every month? Two months. Every two months. Uh, so we kind of get a different car every two months. This one is a Subaru Outback. I think this is, um, it's all unlimited mileage on any car we get. Yeah, so we drive the crap out of these. Easier to park than an F-450 too. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Where's our hotel? <laughs> Emily Morgan, Yellow Rose of Texas. And this is the Alamo. And they said they moved it from where? Somewhere over there. This is on the slow end. We walked all the way down to get away from, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's always busy on a Friday night, but it was wild busy. Obviously the holidays aren't over, so. It's like a boat. Yeah. There you go, fan <laughs> The next morning we went to the San Antonio RV show, our reason for going to San Antonio. and pretty quickly found one of the units we were interested in. This is Van Lee Beacon. If you're not familiar with Van Lee, they're actually a subsidiary of Tiffin, as in Tiffin Motor Coaches. So this is their line of fifth wheels that they've only been making for a few years. See the aluminum framing, inverter. It's a, Can't even tell. I don't know enough about it. 
Dirt Devil back. Yes, <laughs> So this is the those basic back you know. But when you get these, look at all the storage. Wow. I mean, because it goes all the way around. Storage, 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 storage. And that, but there's no room to block off for the kids. This goes out to a bed there, right? It does, but there's no privacy. But I think it, you know, this basic design is the most efficient use of the space because it's kitchen and it's wow, all it's so one. wide. It's all it one area. Great. Well, it's the slide right here, yeah. That's what I was talking about doing with the front living. And and one of them actually did, one of them actually did install a curtain in the front living. How you do so? It's just a whirlpool fridge. It's full residential. Got you some genuine pleather. <laughs> I'm sure you can change that out. This is a small one actually. What is this, 38 feet? Bedroom suite. Double sink. Soft ceiling. Fucking door. We want 44 feet, but see, this is too heavy. This is 40? Yeah, 44. It has three 8,000 pound axles. That's 24,000 pounds. Yes, for the axles. So the biggest F450 is the, is the payload you run out of. So we're talking about 4,800 pound payload. If you pull this with an F350, F450 and put it yourself in a couple bags, you're, you're over payload. You need like a mini semi for this thing or to be legal. Set that up. Don't move it. Or don't yeah, move it, yeah. <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? This is your, oh, your DRV. Yes. Oh, sweet. Hello. How are you? Kyle Adams. Good to meet you, sir. You as well. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, y'all build such quality models, um, but people don't seem to realize you need a bigger truck to pull them. Uh, trucks have helped us last couple of years. Huh? Trucks have helped us the last couple of years. Helped you? Yeah. What Got do you it. mean by that? Five, six years ago, you couldn't find uh, oh, an yeah. F-350 or an F-450 that would pull one of these. I mean, you needed a toter, you needed a small semi. Um, you still do, unless you get a flatbed. Um, the new F-450, so the payload on them. I just bought one, so. What's the payload in it? Just under five. Okay, so where do I supersede it? Uh, this is 24,000 pounds. 20% okay. of that's 4,800. That's, that's not my pin weight though. Really? So no. explain to me, please. It's uh, about 3,600 pounds. It's all axle placement. Really? Yeah. See, that's some beautiful information and why I'm asking you and bringing up. Well, that's why I heard you. So I'm not, I'm not, I was here hustling, but I was like, wait no, a minute, payload correct. capacity. I'm going, wait I'm a minute. I'm one of those, I discuss like, it's like a debate. Like, I'm going to say it like I know it until you, bingo, until bingo. you say, uh-uh, okay, it's so this the way, way. So the 20% rule is just kind of a. A general? Bingo. Bingo. An but it's idea. not a given. So this unit right here, I make a 41-footer just like them. My pin weight's going to be a little less than theirs is just because of my axle placement. Now, so, I might have another unit that may be the same length as theirs, and mine might be four or 500 pounds more just because of where everything fell and where the axle placement is. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for us, we've got to be diligent. I know I'm 24K. If I go ahead and slap 20% of my pin weight on there, I just... How many customers did I pretty much just lose? Exactly, and a I'm bunch. Think, yeah, a bunch. So we, I mean, that's that's part of. That's not my job. That's so my engineer's where job. Where can I see the pin weight? Uh, is it on the is it on the, the motor no, no, rod? What I'll do is I can actually give you. Is this an LX four fifty five or an LX four fifty five? Oh, it's the dream one for me. So what I would do is see that VIN number, the last six digits. I do. I'd email my engineer. 
Yeah, each, say, so hey. it's like my truck. Everyone has their own pin weight. Every single one. We keep we keep all six weights of the tires okay. on file. So I could tell you, hey, that tire had this much weight on it. That tire had this much weight. That tire, so on and so forth. We're all six. We weigh everything kind of that to that finite detail before they leave gotcha. and i keep everything on file so um, that's how i find out the pin weights. bingo and the only reason i know my pin weights is i get asked a lot my average mean my my average means pin weight on this unit right here is 3450. nice so i might have one that's 3700 i might have one that's 33 but my average is 3450 3500 wow, so i can pound. put all day long with the f450 oh, i just dang. bought and see bingo. i love drv Bethy, the pin weights are not necessarily 20% or, or more. They, they've they distributed the weight over the axles. So pin weight's only 30 something hundred pounds. 3,500. We got 46, 46, because we got the King Range, got all the bells and whistles. Bingo. But I'm gonna put the fifth wheel back there and some other yep. weight. So we can pull this all day long. So DRVs are not out for us. They're not out of Does here. Kind of uh, it'll go right here. We didn't put it in it. Okay, I figured because I was like, that's a lot of space. Yeah, that's nice. But that way, I'm not robbing space from there, mm -hmm. and I'm not robbing space from there. Can you explain to me the axles? As far as what we use, well, you, for, you, you have independent suspension on. No, not on this one. No. Um, the reason I don't, I can add it, mm -hmm. but it's going to add 900 pounds of weight to the unit. Okay. It's 280 pounds per axle. So you hit, you hit, if you don't have independent suspension, you hit one tire and they all jump. The whole thing jumps? Two, well, a triple axle acts totally different than a tandem axle does. Okay. And the reason why is that triple axle, that center axle acts as a buffer. Okay. That's, that's basically the easiest way I can, it acts as a buffer. So what it's going to do is when this one hits, now, will you still transfer energy from here to the other side? Absolutely you will, because I have an axle tube. Right. Right. But what that middle axle does is it mitigates that transferring energy from the rear axle all the way to the front or vice versa. Because I've seen these with more rides. Now, I can, yeah, I can put it on there. And that, that is the independent. It is the independent suspension. Okay. And then, and what about the brakes? Are these this hydraulic? These are standard. Yep, hydraulic over electric. It's hydraulic disc brakes? Yes. Sweet. Six of them. Standard. Standard. Nice. So 900 pounds to add the independent suspension is, yeah so you're right now i can carry 4100 pounds in this unit okay if i add more ride that takes me down to carrying about 3300 3200 gotcha. so if that's still in the realm of what you need to do then you know add more ride and go about your business how do you tell if they've got a cap on it if you were to look what do you, like a front uh, the or roof cap? yeah the roof oh uh if it's if like, it's a fiberglass cap? Yeah, because it's not painted, right? Is that Correct. Yeah, you know? nobody nobody in the toy hauler industry that I know of does a fiberglass cap. Okay. Um, we do it. You, you've heard of a mobile suite? I have. Okay. So we do fiberglass caps on our mobile suites. The Elite Suite. No, or or a option. On a mobile. Bingo. Standard on the Elite. You're good. Yeah. Standard on the Elite. Optional on a mobile. I can't do them on this because there is no rear cap. See how there's no rear cap? Right. You can't because it's a toy hauler. Bingo. That, because I replaced my rear cap, which normally goes from here to here, now I don't have a rear cap. Now my mold for my fiberglass roof is 18 inches too short. Oh, wow. Uh, and we're not going to spend the money, though. Sure, yeah. Because you had to pass it on us. Well, yeah, that, but then I'm adding 500 pounds of weight because I'm adding a fiberglass roof over a rubber. You know, so it all, it all adds up. So all slide right. toppers are an option also? They're an option. I can never take them off if I put them on a unit, but I can always add them to a unit if you want them. So that's that's the reason I I leave it like okay. this. So, but this unit is, is paint all the way up to the roof? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what to where you see, see that drip rail? I do. That's paint just above that drip rail and then where that, uh, where it's a brighter white per se. Right. So that's your EPD and rubber roof. Okay. Oh, so, so one more, one more time. What uh, the, the last four digits of the model number? No. Nope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a business card. Okay. <laughs> You've got that number right there. Four two three three seven two. Okay. Email me that number, and I'll get with my engineers January 12th when he gets in back the office, and I'll give you every weight I have posted on this unit: pin okay. weight, axle weight, everything, and then. If you want me to send you four or five other ones, I can just pull four or five random ones and go, hey, out of the last, like basically the last five I built, here's the pin weights. 
and then you can look at it and you can pretty much determine, hey mom, we're safe, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. The last eight or 10 they built were right in this range. We're right. good. Well, I'm already kind of, I mean, if, if the LX455 is 30 something hundred pounds, I think we're okay with we're pretty much any DRV. We, we are. We are. Uh, with so, a 450. Correct. So. But yeah, hopefully that uh, kind of cleared up some things yeah. and made you a little more comfortable. Yeah, and it, no, it does, that's huge. Thank you so it much. Is, absolutely. The, uh, the wood. Y'all use wood. Cherry. That's why. Or maple. That's one of the reasons. First of all, it's, it's the RV's frame. No, it's like none of it. It's that, one that's, of one. There's, there's a way right there. So, so if you cut a, give you an idea, this whole chassis is quarter wall steel. Every single piece of it. Okay. It's, it's heavy. It's all there. Right. Uh, this is essentially a motorhome you're pulling down the road. Sure. It's all there. Because the walls are three and a quarter, three, right? Three and a quarter. But the other thing, uh, here, just come in here real quick. Just wait a minute, because at any given time, you can get a dozen people in here. This unit <laughs> will not shake, it will not move, it will not do anything. Go pick any other fifth wheel with a dozen people in it, and just sit on the sofa and feel the movement and feel what it's doing. If that's a 200 pound person doing that to that unit, what is the unit doing to itself going down the road? Sure, B bouncing all over Man, it's shaking all yeah. apart. So that's what we try to eliminate, is we're trying to eliminate Everything we can from a, a, a... Is that the jacks or is that just the frame, period? It, combination of both. Because no one makes a frame like DRV. No. I mean, just, just don't. They don't. Uh, the other cool thing, the leveling system that you see on all of these units, we invented. Wow. It okay. was invented for this frame, so all my jacks are five degrees outward. Outriggers on a tractor, right? If you're standing straight up right now, I can push you over. Right. Put your feet out just a little bit. What's it giving? Yeah. Just a little bit of stability. Yeah. That's what my jacks are doing for my unit, and that's why right now, one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There was eleven. Here comes twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I count as two. Okay. <laughs> well, just let them all walk through the unit and feel it. And then, like I said, your Look. eyes are not going to lie to you when you go into any other unit and it's sitting there shaking as the customers are coming in. The, the TV. What is it mounted on? Because my question is, if, could I get a big lever that comes out and over? You could add it. I I don't. But it does. Does it's, it have the support behind it's it? It's a solid plywood backer back there. Okay. Yeah. So it definitely can, Correct. yeah. Good deal. Well, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you for the information. And you answered a huge one for me. Yes. Well, um, I heard that. Because I was, like, I was thinking right? DRVs were out for me. I'm being honest with you. You know what I mean? Awesome, Kyle. Call me, please. Call me. Thank you so. Let me, know, let me know you met me down here and say, hey, I'm trying to get the pin weight on that 455 that we spoke of. Email me those digits. And I'm just I'll, surprised it's not on the unit somewhere. Like, because I mean, that is. If I start posting that, every one of them changes. When you add accessories. And whenever and I do something. So if I publish it, that's going to be a fixed number that everybody, what, fixates on. You know what I mean? Now, for one guy, it may be the weight of his unit when he gets it. But what if he adds more stuff to it and it comes up and it's 3,900 pounds and he goes, your brochure says 3,400. But if they start pulling us into weight stations and they start trying to do a 20% rule, they, they go, can't. No, no, no. They, the way they do them is they pull. <clears throat> they'll pull your truck and your trailer on there. Then they'll pull the trailer off and just have your truck in there with the trailer so loaded in it. GVWR and GCW. It all, they, yeah, they're, they know how to calculate it. They're, they're going to look at two things, though. They're going to look at the coat tag on this unit, which is going to say 24,000 pounds GVWR. Right. They're going to look at what I call the coat tag on your truck. Mm -hmm. Can it pull 24,000? Yes. More than likely, they're not going to go after your pin weight. They're not going to go after pin weight. No, because you're already within the confines of what you right. need to be in. Now, what they're looking for is the guy coming in on a 24,000 pound unit with a 23,000 pound truck, mm. right? And then they're going, okay, this doesn't add up. Now let's get into right. what's your payload capacity, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when they... Exactly, because I'm in love with DRV. Thank you, Kai. Hey, appreciate your time. Have a great weekend. Yeah, so now I'm really confused. You know, we're dealing with all these ratios and payload and pin weight and you know, back and forth. First you hear you hear a fifth wheel towing rate. So 2019, what I have, F450 would tow 27,500 pounds. Yay, I can tow anything up to 27,500 pounds. Eh, wrong. You got payload. Then they advertise certain payload on the F450s. Eh, oh, you got 
you want a radio in it. <laughs> so each truck on the inside of the door, it tells you what your payload of your truck is. So I'm sitting here looking up, once I figure out initially that I don't have as much payload as I thought, and that you can max out on pay, payload because of 20% or more of the fifth wheel weight being on your truck, taken away from your payload. So then I said, okay, these big, you know, DRVs like the LX455 are, are out of my capacity for towing. Then I get to the RV show and I meet Kyle, the DRV rep, and, you know, I'm talking to some other gentleman there, you know, about the LX455. And he overhears me and he, so he, you see in the video where he's kind of like, what, what's this guy talking about? Get to him and then he, he's, He's not Ford, but you know, he seems to have a different opinion. I'm, I believe he's a specialist. He's a DRV rep. So, so I listen and I question. He says that, you know, that with their, their pin weight is it 20%. And then, so I get excited and I go, okay, this guy, you know, he's correcting me. I don't know everything. I'm new to this. I'm trying to learn like you are. And then we go, we go back and forth. I'm like, okay, I'm excited. So we leave and <clears throat> I'm talking to Bethany, you'll see in the next video, and just going, okay, well, this is a new thing. When we were out of being able to tow a big DVR toy hauler, I started looking at other units. I found the Nashville, the Nash, DRV Nashville has a front living, we really like that. But then that that's 44 feet, triple axle, 24,000 pounds also like a toy hauler. I'm like, I can't tow this. So then I started looking around for other quality units. One that surprised me that I didn't know was the Riverstone Legacy, RBFL, which stands for front living. Um, in the weight that I can tow, that was a, that's a quality unit I found, and I'm, I'm really interested in that. And you'll see that in the next video. The guy goes, gives me an immaculate walk around. So, is Kyle right? Can I tell with my 4,700 pound payload? Well, he said that LX455, most of them are around, what did he say? Around 35 to 37, right? That the 20% rule doesn't really affect it, that they move the axles to try to balance the weight over the axles. And I'm sure that they do do that to get that pin weight as low as possible. But let's think about that 20% rule for a second. I've got the DRV specs right here, average. So weight, it says weight is 18,800 pounds and 24,000 pounds, okay? So obviously that's the, that's the curb weight, 18,800 pounds and 24,000 pounds is its max GVWR. Well, it, he said, if I take 18,000, 18,800 and apply a 20% rule, that's about 3,700 pound payload, right? Okay, so that's what, and that's what he was talking. But what we've got to consider is we can load it up to 24,000 pounds. We've got to put, we got to fill water in there. We got to put, you know, I'm going to be living, we're going to be living in this thing. So we've got to put our clothes and every, all this other weight. Uh, we're going to get up to 24,000 pounds. I'm not sure the pin weight. The only way to really know is to go to a scale, like Kyle was talking about. You have the, the fifth wheel attached, and you drive onto the scale with just the truck. And then you get the, the weight of the truck, GVWR of the truck, or the gross weight of the truck with the fifth wheel on it, and see is it over 14,000 pounds. And if it is, you're screwed because you're over in payload. <sighs> That's your truck, everything in it, all your passengers, your fifth wheel in the back, your tools, whatever's in the truck, and the fifth wheel on it. So 24,000 pounds, that's 4,800 pound payload, and that's what I was saying in the video before I was corrected. I was excited that I was wrong. Now, I really don't think I am. I think we're both right. He knew what his pin weights were, but that's not the gross. That's the curb weight.
not the GBWR of the unit. Then let's talk about other, th other factors. Even with the 24,000 pounds and all that, you put a generator and some batteries up front, that's gonna be more weight, right? On the pin. That's gonna put more weight on your payload, on the pin load. So, but conversely, what if you have a toy hauler and you load a car, one of those little French cars in the back or something, and it's putting the weight on the back? Would that lighten the, <laughs> the load? The pin weight? So the only way to really know is load up and go, go measure. But you, you, we gotta have an idea before we go buy our unit. Cause we can't buy it and then go, go measure and say, oh, we're over, we're screwed. I'm sorry, honey, you can have one pair of underwear, one pair of shoes, cause we can't, oh, you can't bring that in. We don't have any weight for it. We don't have any room for it. But I wonder about that. Cause that makes sense if we add extra to the front weighs down, but what if you add it to the extra back? When that almost, I guess in theory, it could be enough to even lighten the payload. <laughs> I don't know. If you know, comment and let me know because it's still confusing, okay? Unfortunately, I think I'm right. And if I'm right on this, then we're looking seriously at the Forest River 39 RBFL. Because it's a quality unit that, that the weight is still within range, I believe.